Hi, welcome back to the farm. My name's Roz, also known as Passion Flower, and you'll find me here each week talking about my farming and creative life. Wow, it is really humid again today, and it feels like recording day ends up being raining day. It is raining again. I can hear the rain here on the roof. And after I recorded last week, it poured and I got stuck here for a little while because I couldn't get back over because it was so wet. Um, then the sun came out and it was a really hot, humid day. And then we had another storm late in the afternoon and we had so much rain in a really, really short period of time. The home water tank was overflowing. Um, the gutters were all full. It was just like rivers just flowing down the side. And it was quite extreme and then it stopped and it was warm again. So um, I guess that's, that's summer. I can hear Hurley, Vito and Evie barring at me right now. I had my coffee and came straight over here to the shed to record and I haven't said good morning to them yet. So as soon as I'm done here, even if it is raining, I think I'll spend a little bit of time with them. Um, the hair will end up being super frizzy, but... Uh, as I said, that seems to be the regular at the moment with the humidity. So with these hot days, I haven't been doing a lot outside, uh, not a lot of farm activity in terms of gardening or extra things have been done. Spending a lot of time inside in the middle of the day in the air conditioning, either doing craft, which I will show you shortly, uh, some business planning, and just really chilling out. It's kind of been a little bit of like a, a break holiday kind of time for me. Um, and then I'll be getting back into sort of some dying and things very shortly. Then it's been the evenings that I've been able to get out and do some things. Been watering the plants most nights once the sun has gone down. And it's been really lovely to stop and sit with the sheep spend some time outside i don't tend to take my phone with me unless i plan to take some photos or video but i just kind of sit quietly and watch them graze um, sometimes i see some kangaroos uh, watch the sunset and just take some time to be quiet it's sort of like a nice meditation time it's amazing how well the plants by the tanks here at the shed have done I had a memory pop up from a year ago when they were just planted and now you can see just how much they have grown in a year. That's really encouraging um, that the trees that I've planted for the sheep in their area will hopefully have that much growth as well because um, over a year they were already much bigger than the ones that um, are by the tanks. So in a year's time, they should be reasonably well established as long as I can keep the sheep from eating them. Um, I did add another layer of fencing around it. I used some of the fencing from the actual perimeter of the, the paddock, uh, to the, which is much more um, solid. It's harder to push against than the chicken wire that was originally around them. So they are starting to get a little bit bigger and not have their little leaves tipped off by the sheep every day. I took my car in to be assessed and repaired this week. For those that missed it, uh, in December, I hit a kangaroo and did quite some serious damage to the front of my car. So it is now in for repairs. I'm hoping that it will only be a couple of weeks. That's what they said, but then they had to wait to see what parts they actually needed. Um, yeah, I hope that it's just going to be as simple as that and it's not going to take much longer or they decide that it's not worth repairing because you never know because you just don't know what damage has been done underneath the car. So I'm without a car at the moment, which is a little frustrating. I'm having to borrow cars to sort of figure out where I'm going and what I'm doing. Look, it's not the worst. Uh, since I work from home most of the time, I don't need a car every day because uh, my commute is literally walking over here to the shed. So um, it's just working out with Deb and Adam if I can borrow a car um, for just my little trips here and there. So hopefully I don't have to do that for too long um, before I get my car back.
And I've done a little bit more reorganization. Um, on one of those very hot days, I turned the air conditioning on and it felt like a good thing to sort of potter around and play with putting things into different spots. So I've just been sort of doing a little bit at a time and then seeing how I felt about it. And then if it feels good, I've left it and or changing things when they're not rather than doing like a big change or a big declutter and having everything done at once and then not being happy with how things have worked out. So my latest little bit was to take all of my knitwear out of the chest that I have in my bathroom. I was finding that even though everything was fitting in there really well, it was quite difficult to put things away. I had like two layers of tubs within the chest so that everything was sort of contained, but it meant having to pull out the top tub to get to the bottom one. Uh, I couldn't see everything and it was annoying to put things away because I had to you know, move everything around. And also then I couldn't leave things sitting on top of the chest, which I've been using a sort of a sitting place for clothes after I get out of the shower and um, clothes that, you know, I've sort of worn once and then can put back on again, that kind of thing. So if I wanted to open up the chest, I had to move everything off that. Then I had to move out the tubs. So it was just a bit of a process and not an easy thing. And I kind of felt like I wasn't appreciating my knitwear because it was sitting in this chest and I wasn't getting to see it. So what I did is I moved my books, which I don't have that many of really, um, to the other side of the room where my bench is. Um, I, I don't use it very often and I wanted to keep, sort of keep it clear of junk. So if I put the books there, that sort of took up some of that space. So that's quite good. And then I did a bit of a consolidation and a sort through my linen and towels and moved them up onto the top shelves. The winter linen I have now put into that chest in the bathroom. So it's stuff that I don't need right now and I'll do a switch over for the season. So when it becomes summer, I will put some of the lighter um, linens into there and take out the ones that I need for winter. And so then I had two shelves in uh, the cupboard in my bedroom that I was able to put my knitwear into. So I got it all nicely folded, sorted it into different categories. So I've got two stacks of jumpers. Um, one is jumpers and then one is cardigans. Uh, then I have all of my cowls together. Then I have sort of the big shawls and then I have scarves and mitts and beanies. And it looks really nice. I'm able to see everything, which is really lovely. Sort of um, get to appreciate it as, you know, it's, it's functional, but it is also art. And the yarns are lovely and the finished objects are lovely. So it's nice to be able to see it all. And I know it's summer and I'm not going to be wearing a lot, if any, of this stuff right now because it is so warm. But it's nice to be able to see it and know that as it gets cooler, or if there's a cool day, there's a few cardigans there that are appropriate for this time of year as well. I will be able to easily see them, get inspired and grab them as I'm getting dressed so that they can become more part of my everyday wardrobe rather than being something special that I need to grab out. Um, I really want to make sure that I, I wear a lot more of what I make. I wear my socks all the time, but I don't tend to gravitate towards wearing my shawls and jumpers quite as much. I used to when I worked in a corporate environment, but here on the farm, I tend to go for the, the like the windsheeters and things like that. But there will be times which when a woolen jumper will be much more appropriate. So now that I have them out and I can see them, I think that I will gravitate towards them a lot more. I touched on the fact that I've been doing some business planning um, the start of the year tends to be a good time to do that. It's sort of not like a resolution kind of thing, but just sort of I've taken a bit of a break um, and now I'm sort of getting back into doing work. So just sort of looking at uh, the goals for my business and what needs to get done this year to sort of push that forward. I have been creating some new colorways in my head and sort of writing down some ideas, looking at some photos, uh, getting a few 
ideas together so that I can get ready for a dye day. Um, and also some pattern ideas around some of the colorways that I already have to sort of uh, show some ways that you can use uh, my colors together. Now those patterns are, are a long way off, but it's fun to sort of think about all that stuff and especially about new colors. So as I start to work on those aspects of my business, I will share it with you. Um, and as I said in my start of the year video, I would like to be doing some more uh, die day kind of videos. So with that in mind, uh, they will be coming along shortly, I hope. So the plan will be that I'll get some of those dying days recorded and share with you. I'll try to maybe do a little bit live if I can, but in general, because of the bad internet, I think it'll just be pre-recorded and then I can share um, my creations with you that way. Well, I finished my granny stripe blanket. After I showed it to you last week, I was weighing to see how much of the contrast color I had left. And it ended up that I only really had enough to do that last pass of the the pattern and then I went back and just did a single crochet to mimic the start so that both ends looked the same and then I went through and I've added a border I did a row of single crochet and then I look I don't even know what the rest is called I just made it up um, I went and just sort of experimented with how um, I thought things should look. So you can see there, it's a three row border and there's the corner. The corners are a little bit messy. I kind of had to fudge them a little bit, but you know. Uh, so I'm really pleased with how it came out. Um, I didn't want anything too big um, or fussy or with too many holes, sort of a similar look to the blanket itself. Um, and I used a strawberry shortcake in a sparkle base that I was trying out. I now have the blanket Ooh, completely bordered. It's quite big. I do still have all of the ends to weave in though. So I did catch them all with the border, but now I just have to tidy them all up and cut them short so there's still quite a bit of work until this is actually finished and it's not really the fun stuff so I've kind of been doing a little bit at a time I put a marker in along the side here so I've only done the ends I've only weaved in the ends on this small section here I still have them all loose but they're all done so I still have all of this to weave in plus any that are in the middle of the blanket as well where I changed the colors I really do love it. I think it's turned out beautifully. When it is completely done, I will take a photo of it laid out so you can see all the colors and I will list them all um, in the description. Uh, but it, I might even do that this week. I'll pop it on the floor after I'm done here and I will take a photo and I will list all of the colors uh, so that you can see it in all of its beauty. The only other thing I have been working on this week are my kite flying socks. Uh, so I've made quite a bit of progress on them. I finished the first one. It ended up quite long. I said I was going to do another full repeat of the colours, which I did. But it has worked out to be about the length that I would knit to if I was knitting a long pair of socks. It's probably a little longer, but that was just so that I got to the point where the pattern was going to be in the right spot to start the second one. So if I'm doing a long pair of socks, what I do is knit to the, the toe increases. So when you fold it over, it hits the toe increases. And then I do ribbing for the length of the toe. And that seems to give a nice length of sock for me. So that's number one done. And yesterday I cast on number two and I'm already more than halfway through the foot. And remarkably, I'm getting the stripes to match up. And that 
it was literally a guess because it's, look at that it's pretty good it's maybe slightly off but it's going to be enough that it's not going to be noticeable at all when you're wearing them and in terms of length and and position of the heel it's not going to make that much difference either so i'm super pleased with that but i'm surprised because what i would normally do is start the toe in between color changes so that i can do the next one exactly the same but because i wasn't sure how long the color change was going to be on this first one because i wasn't familiar with the striping pattern i just kind of started um so then i just had to guess where to bind off and i've managed as i said managed to match it up pretty well so yeah these are zooming along because at the moment apart from the weaving in of the granny stripe blanket this is the only knitting i've been doing the anacal is still on the needles and i will just be doing a row here and there when i've got that concentration time um I have been, while I've been knitting on these and weaving in ends, I have been thinking about some future projects, um, you know, sort of looking at my stash and thinking about yarn options and thinking about pattern options. So I'm sure that something will pop into my mind soon that will end up being a new project. But at the moment, especially because it's so warm, there's not a lot of crafting really to be done. So. I'm enjoying the socks because they're easy and even when it's warm, it's not too hard to work on. The blanket, obviously I need the air conditioning cranking for that because it ends up being all over me while I'm working on it. So it does feel weird that I don't have a lot that I'm working on right now, uh, but it does mean that I get a lot of progress done, which is quite good. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you next week on the farm. Bye.